This video is sponsored by Crunchyroll. Go to crunchyroll.com slash donwhop or click on the link in the description and get your 14 free trial on Crunchyroll Premium now. That's crunchyroll.com slash donwhop. Let me know what your favorite animes are to binge watch in the comments below. Support has often been considered one of the easiest and most boring roles in League of Legends. With champions like Soraka, Sona, and Janna, Champions that often just sit back, shield, heal, and kite. Support isn't exactly defined as a exciting role. Supports that do tend to be exciting and fun to play tend to be lane dominant supports, such as Leona, Set, and Pantheon. These supports tend to be extremely aggressive and dictate the lane for their AD carries. For the most part, traditional tank supports such as Taric and Nautilus have been sort of phased out of the meta in favor of these more aggressive engaged supports. But there is one support player who plays a very aggressive and exciting style of support. And even though this support player often carries his marksmen's in games, he is infamously hated to be played with as AD carry players. This is how to play like a challenger. My name is Alicopter, Challenger Alistair Wintrick basically. My highest LP this season has been 1121 LP, top 14, 15. I've been Challenger since season 7 and been playing the game since season 4. I wasn't always a support main, I played every role before I ended up on support. So I'm known for my roaming playstyle. Okay, I play Alistair because I don't know why nobody else sees it. In my perspective, this champion is the best playmaking and the best flanking champion this game has and actively contributing to the game. Not like the, one of those Argent support champions and you're just like standing behind, you're waiting for your AD carry to make the plays or you're waiting for the enemy to make a mistake. Instead, you're the one actually engaging, you're the one setting the tempo. So the game goes at your pace. And that's literally why I love the champion. In the early game, basically, your level 1, level 2 are not that strong at all. You want to be waiting for your level 3. Level 3, if you have an aggressive AD carry, an AD carry that actually does damage early on, Tristana, Callista, or something like that, you can actually look for trades, you can actually look for fights. The enemy bot lane is the one who has pressure on you. You just wait, try to get the wave next to the tower, and try to look for a flash Q combo, and throw the enemy onto your turret. And usually, if they get hit by one tower shot, you end up winning the trade if you guys are even HP. If the enemy's smart, it's not that easy to make a play. It's especially in Challenger, because Alistar is a very straightforward champion. It's very easy to read what I'm about to do. That's why I usually try to roam and have the element of surprise and attack them. Get Mo Moby Boots early on and try to look for roams. That's the key thing. That's the key rune for this champion, which changes everything. There are so many angles, so many opportunities that is opened up by Hex Flash. The thing that I'm most known for is basically the chicken camp. When I roam to mid lane and I try to gank the enemy mid laner, I usually go from the chicken camp and just Hex Flash behind them and headbutt the enemy towards my teammate. And we just end up getting like a three man gank in. Even in lane at bot lane, from bush to bush. Some people don't know this, that both of the bushes are not worded. You could Hex Flash from one bush to the other if you do it perfectly and they will not even see the animation gap close without them even realizing and just get an engage in essentially alicopter style is completely centered around getting his lanes that are more priority in the early game your goal objective is to get your other lane like mid lane or top lane or jungle whatever lane you're helping extremely ahead so that whatever you're losing on bot side of the map is made up by the opposite side of the map and usually in early mid game those top lane mid lane champions have much more of an impact than an ad carry does alicopter isn't necessarily abandoning his ad carry because he feels like ad carry is useless he's abandoning ad carry for lanes that have better early and mid games than the adc role one of the most common things you will see in high elo bot lane is a gank where five or four people show up Top laners in Challenger have great map awareness, which means that if a fight breaks out in bot lane, you can bet that somebody is going to TP down there and change the flow of the fight. If Alicopter goes up top lane, gets a kill with his top laner, the enemy top laner will be forced to burn resources like his teleport to get back into lane so he can stay relevant. When the enemy top laner is behind, he will not be able to come down bot lane and use his teleport. Even if you're not getting kills in the top or mid lane, you're giving your laner a good time to get to go back to base. And this means they will have priority in their lane. So if a fight does break out in bot lane, the top laner or the mid laner can teleport to the fight and turn it for your AD carry. 
One of the most common things that happen in high elo challenger is tower dives. Challenger players are generally more mechanically gifted and they are more coordinated than lower elo players. This means that the enemy AD carry and his support can often dive your AD carry depending on the matchup. So what Alicopter often does is he doesn't just always go for a roam. Sometimes if he knows that the enemy laners are in a matchup where they can 2v1 dive his AD carry, he will actually just leave vision, go out, and pretend like he's roaming. So instead of always just going to roam, what he will do is he will pretend to leave and then use Hex Flash to come over the wall and get a kill on the diving support. You try to minimize your pressure from lane. I don't know if you ever watched this anime called Kuroko's Basketball. What he wants to do is minimize his pressure and then they forget the guys even on the field and then he just make, starts making these plays. That's where like the style is coming from kind of. I want to minimize my pressure. I want them to think that I'm not even in lane. I'm not even there. Then they get cocky. They start walking the tower and all that. You can watch Kuroko's Basketball and all your other favorite anime classics at crunchyroll.com slash Get the newest anime episodes like Attack on Titans within a single hour of its release in Japan. Members get everything ad-free and in perfect 1080p HD. Upgrading gets you more amazing features such as offline viewing and downloading your favorite animes to watch wherever and whenever you want. Crunchyroll is available on all devices. Whether it's Xbox or Apple TV, Crunchyroll is there for your anime fix. If you want to be inspired to come up with your own challenger gameplay, then go to crunchyroll.com slash and start watching today. In a 1v2 situation, an AD carry stands no chance under tower. But in a 2v2 situation, the enemy team stands no chance against your tower. So you can get kills by roaming sort of to your own lane. The most important item of this roaming playstyle is obviously going to be mobility boots. Alicopter really really likes mobility boots. And generally, you want to finish this item as early as 9 to 11 minutes in. Getting sweep reward on your first back before your first roam is also key to ensuring that your roams work out. Let's say I'm walking from Tribush. I just pink it. They don't see me there yet. I just walk around. I'm behind them before they even know it because Moby Boots gives you that edge. If they don't react to it right away, it's going to be too late. They have to react as soon as they see me. Over there, they have to react right away. If they don't react right away, it's going to be too late. I'm going to end up behind them. I try to flank. I try to push them towards my AD carry. Engage champions usually end up destroying ardent champions in lane early on. If you get a flank, you just bring him inside your minion wave or towards your tower. You push him and CC chain. And hopefully your AD carry does damage, understands what's happening and hits him. High Elo is a small community. There are only about 300 Challenger players and 700 Grandmaster players. So pretty much everyone knows who Alicopter is in that Elo. Now, though most people know Alicopter in Challenger, if you're trying this playstyle in lower Elo, oftentimes your AD carry will just straight up flame you. They will get pissed that you're not in their lane. They might die. They might just give up. How should you approach using this playstyle in an elo where players are not used to a hyper roaming support? Okay, if you're trying this in low elo, very preferable that you mute them. The thing is how it goes in low elo is that he's going to start flaming, your ADK is going to start flaming. Then you're going to want to reply. Once you reply, it's going to be a conversation back and forth and you're not going to be able to focus on your game. He's not going to focus on his game and it's just going to be even more triggering for him and for you. So just mute him, do your thing. So long as it's working out, you're fine. Just snowball other lanes and try to help him out every now and then you know mental having a good mental is probably like more than 50 percent more than 50 percent of the games are decided by probably having a good mental if you have a good mental you see things more clearly if i'm tilted i can't see these plays that i would have been able to see when i'm not tilted like it blurs my vision there's like so much useless information in my head when i'm angry i could be doing so much better better if i wasn't whole point is i help the other lane the other lane has a lead and then he can help me out afterwards and we end up three four man bot lane with the entire team so everybody's winning at the end it's just a matter of patience it's just a matter of focus you don't want to get distracted by flaming or typing to your ad carry and whatnot this is the main reason why ad carries hate playing with alicopter so much he doesn't play like a traditional support he isn't going to sit in lane and baby you and give you shields and heals. He's not going to carry your lane for you by dealing tons of damage with Pantheon or Set. He's going to let you fend for yourself, fall slightly behind in CS, and make big plays around the map. If I'm in the lead, I want to be looking for plays. I want to be looking for flanks. I want to be getting into position. Whatever objective that's coming up next, whatever place that I think there's going to be a fight happening, 
I want to be there first and to have words, always have pink words. Just deny them vision, get vision over there for your team. Try to wait in a spot, wait for them to get there and try to look for a flank. I'm playing an engaged champion. I'm not playing an ardent champion. I'm not looking to get this game prolonged to 35, 40 minutes. I want to end these games between 20 to 30 minutes. You want to finish the games as early as possible. So you want to be forcing plays non-stop. By going in and making plays throughout the early and mid game, you are trying to force the enemy hand and force fights to end the game as quickly as possible. For your build, start Relic Shield and two pots. Ideally, you don't want to take your first base until you can go back, purchase regular boots and a control ward for your first roam. Generally, you want to be finishing mobility boots around the eight or nine minute mark. After mobility boots, you can choose between two core mythic items, Locket of the Iron Solari for more team fight potential, or Shirelia's Battle Song for more playmaking and engaged potential. For your last few items, you have a variety of choices. Redemption, Knight's Vow, and Zeke's Convergence are all very consistent items on Alistar. The item you choose first simply depends on your team composition and what your win condition is going to be. Playing around who's most fed is your main job on Alistar. For your abilities, max Q, W, then E. For your runes, you can take two different pages, you can take this phase rush page, which is much faster and much easier for proccing your E during your roams. Hextech flash traption for the playmaking potential and futures market to buy an earlier mobility boots. Alternatively, if you're deciding to stay in lane a little bit more, you can take this aftershock page for a bit more dueling and tankiness. For your rune stats, always take CDR and armor and magic resist. If you're playing support and you don't want to be behind your AD carry the entire game, waiting for them to make the plays and you want to be actively making the plays yourself, this is the champion you're going for. The only difference between me and the other helicopter wannabes, they don't have this playmaking vision with Alistair. I have so much more experience on the champion. Obviously, I see things that they don't because I've literally been playing the champion for the last four years almost. But that's just going to come with experience. I like to consider this as an art, you know. You can't imitate an art and have it be as good as the original. So my name is Alcopter. If you want to watch my streams, I usually stream during the weekdays on fp.gg slash Alcopter, LOL. Or on the weekends on twitch.tv slash Alcopter. Come in and understand the playmaking potential these champions have and you will see a different perspective of support. Actually much more fun than people make it out to be. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Have a good day.